everyone, I'm Joya Logue. I'm a watercolor artist here in the US and I'm asked to share a watercolor tutorial with all of you. Something simple that all uh, levels can enjoy and have fun with. Like everyone else, I have, my family have been social distancing and staying home for about 40 days now. And I'm lucky that my studio is here at my home, but at the same time, I'm sure you can understand it gets kind of noisy as I have three boys and a dog and my husband's also working at home. So I just wanna say in advance, if you hear anything while I'm sharing this tutorial with you, I'm sure you'll understand. So let's get started. Okay, the simple supplies that you will need for this project include a sketch pencil, one watercolor brush, any size, uh, medium size to larger is probably better, uh, one color, whatever your choice of color is, uh, a couple of items in your garden that you've collected, so blooms, petals, um, it could be a leaf, it could be something of your house plant, if you have a windowsill that you grow herbs on, like coriander, basil, uh, whatever you can find, just some inspiration for shapes and patterns, and then water, of course, and watercolor paper, or if you don't have watercolor paper, just something sturdy. Uh, you may see some rippling effects if it's something uh, that's too light, but it will still work and could just add to the experience and the project and make it maybe have a little bit more character. And then of course, a, a paper towel just for blotting any um, excess water. So earlier this morning, I was walking around my garden gathering up some uh, fallen blooms and leaves. Uh, I even picked up some coriander from my kitchen and was playing around with creating some patterns uh, with nature. And um, this is something I tend to do in my watercolor art is that I don't always paint everything so literally and um, in a realistic form. Many times I'm just drawing inspiration either by the shapes or the colors or um, the patterns that I create. So what I have here is just my watercolor paper laid down with, I have taped it off. You can, if you have artist tape or painter's tape or masking tape, you can tape it off. That just gives it a clean edge and keeps the watercolor paper uh, from bubbling up too much. Um, and because this is a simple tutorial, um, I haven't even stretched my paper or anything. So just to keep it simple, if you have a watercolor block, where it's already attached to each side, you can just leave it as is, or even a spiral bound. Some of the paper is very thick and absorbs um, really well. So what I'm gonna start doing right now is just do a light sketch of the sort of pattern that I created. So whatever you create, um, you know, I don't, I don't uh, really worry about it being perfect. It's just kind of getting the outline um, or the placement of things. And um, this just helps guide me when I'm laying down color and stuff. So, you know, nothing has to be perfect. Uh, I think we need to, I think that'll take some of the pressure off of uh, everyone when they're creating if we don't think about it like that and just think about shapes. Uh, so I brought the stem down here on mine and kind of created this like downward leaf. Um, and then on this side, It's also Earth Day today, so um, that I'm recording this. So happy Earth Day. I think we're all appreciating nature in a different way now, or hopefully we are seeing how important it is to our livelihood and just how much nature flourishes, the animals, trees, the uh, floral, everything is just flourishing while we're all indoors, which I think says so much. Um, okay, let's see here, and then I have some sort of these sort of offshoots here in the middle that I've made, and sort of like a downward, and this has the little... Now, if you are not comfortable sketching freehand, then you can always trace. Um, you can easily, like I can show you this, so I can always lay this down and just, you know, hold it down and 
trace it so that you get a nice pattern. Um, actually, if you pick larger um, leaves and things, you will have the ability to, uh, you know, easily trace them. And this is that final petal, which I've just kind of done the shape wrong. But, um, you can also have a have an eraser handy. That'll help you out. Okay, so basically we've got this shape and So I've made this little motif here, and now we're going to get started painting. Okay, so the feeling that I'm going for with this is a little bit graphic, and I am have chosen to do a, a simple black and white painting. So I'm using black pigmented watercolor paint and water. And uh, first what I like to do is, I like to put a little bit of color down um, where we've, you know, basically, I'm going to pull over this. So if I want to look at this, kind of looking at, you know, where the shadows are and everything, and, you know, just kind of outlining, uh, filling in some of the water, the petals, where I've kind of put them. My biggest uh, tip with watercolor is to use a lot of water. <laughs> at least in the beginning, it should should move very easily. And I think um, that's one of the things that differentiates it from other mediums, other paint. So I'm not really worrying about defining this too much right now um, because we will do that as it dries. So then the, um, you know, there's some little details here that we can put in later. So I'm just going to kind of And what's fun about this is if you use your brush, any brush really will do. Um, you can use all angles of your brush for this type of work. So if you want a very thin line, you can do that. And if you want um, a very now, I'm going to block this a little bit because this is the petal, but I'm going to do a little bit lighter. And you can bring it up to a point like this. And then same thing with the other side. Now these don't have to be uniform or anything either. That's like the beauty of like this exercise is that it's basically a sketch and it gets you very comfortable with the watercolor medium because you're spending time trying to get different variations. So see, sometimes I pick up a little bit of paint other times I'm just using very little pigment and just a little bit of water. Um, okay, so these little things are tiny, so I'm just using the very tip of this brush. And same here. Might pick up a little paint. to the side. So now we're doing like these leaves here, you know, and they don't have to be exact. So that's what's fun about it. Um, these tend to have this little bit of an edge, whether or not you want to put that in, doesn't really matter. I'm going to get a lot of water, to kind of bring this up together. Same thing on this side. I 
think the beauty of it is making it a little bit different on each side, actually. It certainly takes the pressure off. So making it symmetrical, you don't need to. If you want to, you can. So then down here, I just have this little, this like little coriander leaf from my kitchen. And again, um, you can bring that over as your inspiration just to kind of see what you're working with here. You know, and this is just Actually, you could do this with your children too. It might, my, I know my kids would love to do this. My youngest uh, is really into the arts and um, he's nine. So again, um, you know, and if you feel like that's too dark, you can just take up a little bit of, while watercolor is still wet, you can easily remove a little bit of it. Okay, so. And if we want to add a little bit of the detail there, we can. Okay, now let's kind of some depth to it. So this is dried just enough to, you know, add a little bit of interest here. So you're almost thinking of it as light ink, you know. Um, and then. You can add these little it's actually a kind of a fun way to commemorate your garden where you're at and which season or what herbs you're growing or you know anything really I mean you could just do all sorts of interesting things And I'm feeling like this needs something. So I'm just gonna add that there. And uh, okay. I like the way that it moves like that. So so now I'm gonna let this dry. And then once it's dry, we'll do a bit of a wash in the background just to set the set the painting off. You could keep it white like this if you want, um, but I'm gonna think let it dry and then maybe add either a dark backdrop or just a light gray wash. Okay, so I'm starting to just add a little bit of the background here. Now you can always do the background first. Um, actually, many of my paintings I do that, but for this demonstration, I thought it'd be easier to see the shapes and create them. Um, so I'm just adding a little backdrop. Uh, you know, it can, doesn't have to be perfect, it can be dark in some areas, etc. And just dropping some water in to this. dark on one side. Literally just dropping water 
with a hint of pigment. sort of like this old feeling to it. Nothing too perfect. So now once this all dries, you can peel away the tape, or at least it's at least it's um about 50 to 70 percent dried. Peel off the tape and then we'll look at the finished painting. Okay, here's the finished painting. So everything is dried and I've removed the painter's tape and now the painting would be ready to frame, hang in your home or gift to a friend. So I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this watercolor workshop. And if you end up creating a botanical pattern like this and would like to share it with me, please tag me at Roger Villa on Instagram and I would love to take a look.